Welcome to Stoughton Spotlight. I'm your host, Jeffrey Pickett. We're continuing our Conversations with the Candidates series, where we'll be interviewing the four candidates who are running for selectmen in this year's town election and the two candidates who are running for school committee. There are four candidates, as I mentioned, for selectmen, and I'm joined by one of those candidates on this episode, Peter Brown. Thanks so much for joining me, Peter. Thank you, Jeff, for having me. I appreciate this opportunity to come and share some time with you today. And it's exactly what we'll be doing. It's just a chance to have a conversation, get to know the candidates, and discuss uh, some of the town uh, key issues that are coming up this election season. Okay. So I will start off, Peter, by giving you a chance to introduce yourself to the members of the Stoughton public. Uh, you're currently a finance committee member, but uh, tell us a little bit about yourself for those who don't know Peter Brown. Okay, well, I, um, I moved here in uh, 1994. We bought a home on Chapman Road. I, uh, my wife is a lifelong resident of Stoughton. Um, I met her on, the, on my job, and uh, we bought a home in 1994. Uh, I'm a former lieutenant with the Massachusetts Department of Correction. I'm retired now. I'm a graduate of Northeastern University in criminal justice program. Um, I am a member of FinCom. I'm also a town meeting rep uh, elected. This is my third year, fourth year uh, town meeting rep. Um, and I'm a proud dad of a 14-year-old that attends Stoughton High School and a um, uh, proud citizen of Stoughton. I really, I really like this town. I've been here, like I said, it's been my second home to Stoneham where I grew up when I was a young boy and uh, been here since 94 and I love it. So what motivated you to run for selectmen and to, uh, you're, you're currently part of the political process through the finance committee, but to, to buy for a spot on the selectmen? Well, some of my, um, some, some of the reason behind that is that, you know, I, I've, I've been watching and learning. I think the time and uh, there was, I, I've always had an interest in town government and actually government in, in general. And uh, after serving a few years on the FinCon, this is actually my third year, and being involved in town meeting and watching the, the going-ons, uh, um, I thought it would be the a right opportunity for me to see what, if I could bring my leadership characteristics and um, innovate, innovative ideas and um, good judgment and uh, principles and uh, apply them to it, uh, uh, the position of selectman. Uh, if elected, what would your goals be for your three-year term? Well, I think uh, one, of the, one of the things that I, I'm concerned with and worried like lots of citizens out there is that um, our budget seems to be growing at a you know, an increase of, I don't know, 5% or so a year. Um, and our capital outlay projects, and there are a lot of um, concerns with all the buildings and things of this nature. So one of my goals is to try to spend a little wiser, uh, maybe a little bit more prudently, and take a look at um, the way we invest and where we're going from project to project. There's a lot of plans out there, a lot of uh, discussions of doing new buildings and things of this nature, and I think that uh, we have to take a strong look at how are we going to get to pay for these um, these uh, projects and facilities and whatnot? So one of that that would be a primary goal of mine: fiscal prudence and taking a look at where we're spending the money and how we do it. Well, let's start with the capital projects. You mentioned those, and there's a lot of those yeah. coming up, uh, namely the high school. There's the library, which I know that was an issue of uh, contention at the February third, I believe it was, meeting mm -hmm. between the selectmen and finance committee. Uh, there's uh, the possible police and fire station. There's a lot of capital projects, large capital projects on the horizon. Where does the town begin at funding these? Well, see, that's that's the question that I, I kind of take a look from. Uh, you know, when I'm sitting on FinCom and I'm sitting in town meeting, one of the things I'm always mindful of is the spending that the town's doing, whether it be us as a collective group or individual committees that get together before town meeting. It's it's um it's it, it's it's there's there's some concerns where we're going to get the fund from. Uh, there's there's only a couple ways that you can get monies uh, generated revenue for a new building, and that's people that talk about this could be a potential override of the, of the current tax or a debt exclusion, uh, including borrowing money. So uh, I'm not exactly certain where I stand on how to bring that money in and how we 
you know, go about and what we address as a priority. I know the high school's pending as we speak. I'm not certain that the fire department police building is even on uh, The high school's certainly further yeah. along in the process. And the library, I know, was decided prior to me getting on town meeting, so I'm not even up to speed on where we stand on the funding for that building at this point. So, Would you, uh, looking at the budget this year, certainly something that you are privy to in finance committee, right. uh, what about this budget particularly stands out to you? Are there places that you would modify? You talked about spending. Uh, talk to me a little bit about the, the upcoming proposed budget. Well, one of the things I see in a budget, in any budget, at any level, is I see a mandatory spending and a discretionary type spending. And as far as salaries go, um, they're pretty well set in stone. Um, you kind of have an idea of what you're collecting in revenue through the different sources. So you have a kind of an idea where you are with the budget. People like to discuss that there's a balanced budget, that it's you know more or less it doesn't exceed what we take in. But bear in mind, to get to that, it requires an uh, increase in taxes year in and year out. One of my concerns as a FinCon member was I asked the question, has there ever been a time where Stoughton, the town of Stoughton, hasn't taken that increase? And although they say it's modest year in and year out, it is every year. So that's where it, that's a concern for me as a citizen. It's a concern for me as a FinCon member that that's where the direction that we go in. It's year in and year out. Now we also have a fairly decent amount of uh, free cash. Uh, I'm not at liberty to discuss its public information, but I don't know the exact number, but that's a, that's a directive out by A, prudent spending, but in addition to also taking tax money, maybe, just maybe, um, a little more aggressive in our efforts year in and year out, maybe we don't necessarily have to be there every year. Maybe there could be what I'd like to look at as a year, uh, a break, maybe a moratorium or a year off from an increase. I don't think it will affect, I don't think it will affect personally um, uh, either way of the, the budget. So going into, uh, going back to the building project, would you be in favor of the high school uh, build, either replacing or renovating the high school? I definitely think that something needs to be done with the high school. The high school is an old building. Um, I, I support, I supported it, uh, you know, when we voted for it. I'd li I would have liked to see it move a little quicker than we were at. But um, yeah, I'm in favor of the high school. And uh, going back to the budget, uh, just with the increase in spending, is there anything specific that okay, you Okay, well, would... you, you, and I'm sorry, you had yep. asked that, and I yep. didn't mean to cut you off. You, you had asked about the, the budget yep. and the mandatory versus discretion. I had said about mandatory spending is salaries and operations and things of this nature, but I look at discretionary spending as articles and capital projects that come before you on a regular basis. Now, that's where I would look and try to maybe scrutinize a little further in detail um, as, as a member of the Board of Selectmen, I would like to champion a maybe a slower movement towards spending in article um, cap capacity, if you will. For example, there may be 50 articles, 40 of those may be, or 30 of them may be spending articles. Do we really need that on every year? My, my, my answer to that is probably not. Uh, one of the roles of a selectman is to evaluate the town manager. Mm -hmm. And uh, there seems uh, right now in the selectmen, there's some selectmen who are more critical of the town manager and of the administration, and then there's uh, selectmen who are less so. Where would you kind of fall? What, what would your evaluation be of the town manager and the, the performance so far? Well, the first thing I'd like to say is that I think everyone needs to remember that the taxpayers are the people in charge. I think the town manager is doing a great job, to be honest with you. I really, I believe in what he's doing. I think he's um, confident, experienced, uh, has brought a lot of change about. Some considered very good, some challenged, like any type of change. I happen to believe in him. I think he's doing a good job. But I also believe that the selectmen, or as a selectman, there has to be strong oversight. And what I mean by oversight is not daily operation or running the, you know, the daily affairs. That's what we pay a town manager good money for and the other department has to run their departments. But I think that the selectmen as the five elected leaders 
to really handle the budget have to be involved in um, uh, appearance and stronger, I want to say oversight, and that's why I went directly to one of my suggestions that I would, if personally was elected, try to, to set aside hours weekly where I would actually sit and be available to the townspeople to come in and talk to, you know, to, of any type of issue. I don't want them to just have to be able to call me. I'd like to be available, and that's something I believe that it's not only good for the taxpayer, but it's good for the folks who work for the town of Stoughton. And so the town manager's uh, increase, or contract extension rather, last year, and just some other labor-related uh, issues really uh, proved to be a deciding factor in both the selectmen and school committee race last year. Do you see any labor issues carrying over to this election cycle, or do you think that's in the past? Well, I'm not aware of any labor issues that... Or just the, the feeling from last year, just kind of, it, it was very, uh, it, there really seemed to be a wave of, of change from last year. Do you see uh, any of those uh, factors carrying over this year, or do you see, kind of see this independently this year? Is it, 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 you know, it's different, it, time, you know, moving on. Well, if I understand your question, I think you're trying to ask me if, uh, if I believe that the, 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 the election may be decided upon the thinking of certain is labor there, groups. Certain groups or, in town. No, I'm not certain there is anything, that, a layover like that. And if there is, I'm not really aware of it. You know. And uh, let's talk about uh, some of the, the big issues, uh, big topics in town. We'll start with downtown. Okay. Uh, what's your take on this current situation downtown? There seems to be many groups that meet and discuss and come up with different plans. Um, what does Peter Brown think? Well, I think that obviously everyone can agree that something needs to be downtown, done downtown. Um, downtown isn't generating any real success stories. It isn't bringing in any real... Uh, business opportunities at this point. I think that the traffic concerns are clearly an issue. I don't know if anything can really ever be done effectively until the traffic is ironed itself out. Um, I've heard lots of plans, lots of ideas, um, but I haven't seen the method in which to obtain those goals. And I'm not quite certain what the benefit is going to be on the other side of that, I attended the um, downtown planning meeting in February, I believe it was early February at the high school, mm -hmm. um, and the consultants were there. They were talking about these changes and that, and they were using several towns to compare uh, the downtown renovations with. And one of my questions was, and I've yet to hear the answer, was how did they benefit by their renovations of downtown? Where did they? What were their goals? Were they modest? Were they were they for um, the expansion so much that it, it brought in so much revenue that it, it benefited the town greatly. I would love to see something down there. I'd love to be able to enjoy the downtown area by walking and whatnot. But to be honest with you, I'm like probably everyone else in the town. I try to avoid downtown at all costs because of the traffic issues. Well, if, is, like you said, that's because of the traffic issues. If those were somehow alleviated or in some way, shape, or form, would you go back downtown more? I think the... The, or are we looking at broadening the scope? Is downtown too fine a focus? Should the scope be widened and you know other ends of 138 looked at, for example? Well, I, I agree that the, the, the whole town should be addressed. It's not just one particular area. I don't think downtown is the, actually the, the sole key to the success of Stoughton. I don't think if we develop downtown, um, it's going to be, ha you know, people are going to be coming from all over the place to, to, to move you. No fill the dreams effect. Right, right. right. I, I think that there is a whole area from maybe starting in Canton down 138 all the way through the other side of 138 that can be looked at, and I think it is being looked at. There are some changes, but all positive. Uh, the downtown with traffic the way it is is still going to be an issue until it's addressed. Now, my thought on this is maybe we extend that invitation to the governor who's now newly in place. Maybe we reach our hand and, and, and ask, invite the governor and several, you know, Senator Joyce and uh, Representative Kafter and, and several others to come in and see our concerns. We really have a lot of, we have a, a, a great opportunity downtown possibly, but I don't think we can do it, do anything without the partnership 
of some bigger sources like the state and even federal funding. Now, speaking of other uh, buildings in town, uh, there's been discussion of articles uh, about it either beautifying property or just kind of dealing with abandoned properties in right. town. And there's a lot of abandoned properties around Stoughton when you drive around. Uh, what's your take on this? Uh, discuss this issue a little bit. Well, it's interesting because abandoned properties uh, was one of my pet peeves when I first got on FinCom. I, I saw so many abandoned properties. Um, but there are, there are circumstances that create abandoned properties. Uh, there are hardships that cause people to have to leave their property. Um, I think there's a difference between a, a scoffle or somebody who's just abandoned it and basically turned a blind eye, opposed to property that may be deteriorating or becoming in bad shape or deteriorating shape because of whether it be financially, they're not able to keep up with it. So I personally voted or I stayed away from supporting anything that would police people's private property, if you will. I think that there are, there are Massachusetts general laws in place to pursue abandoned properties. I think that the buildings that are dilapidating are unsafe to go into. I think we should be actively pursuing, whether it be through the legal courts or through the general laws that are uh, you know, laid out for us, or, or you know, statute that's involved. I don't necessarily think that the town or us, or selectmen, or anyone else for that matter, should be making those decisions at that level, if you follow Yes, yeah, so just, just to clarify, just make sure I understand you, you're basically saying there are laws in the books that already deal with this problem, That's and correct. you weren't agreeing with the one that was, cur that was proposed. I'm not supporting anything that would um, put additional hardships on people. You, you know, th there are people out there that aren't in agreement that the economy is doing all that much better. Um, there are people out there that make it from week to week. I, I, I think that abandoned property is just that, abandoned property. There are laws to take care of abandoned property. There are buildings in this town that have been sitting abandoned for quite some time, quite some time. We have the means to go through the state to pursue that. Now that means money, spending additional monies to go after money. Where does it, where is the the balance fit. Uh, as a selectman, or as a finance committee member, looking at the selectman, I should say, uh, what would what would your evaluation be of the 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 tone of the board, the tone of the discussion of the board? Do you feel it's productive? Do you feel it's done in a conciliatory manner? Uh, what what would you say? Well, I think um, I think everybody has good intentions. I think everybody has the best interest of the town. I think everybody is um, concerned and, and want to make for a better or even better Stoughton. Um, there are times where there are disagreements. That's okay. Um, I, I may have a difference of opinion which may result in a disagreement with another colleague or even with another board. But I think collectively as, the, as all boards and particularly you asked about the selectmen, I think they're working um, for the, in the best interest. Uh, do I think all the decisions they make are, uh, are the best? Probably not. Now the selectmen are discussing uh, charter, possible charter changes. They had a meeting about this a number of months ago. Uh, is there anything about the way that this town runs right now that if you got elected as selectmen you would like to see done differently? Well, I'm not quite certain I can say that without saying that I I do believe that it's the people's town. I believe that the taxpayer sets the, the ideals, if you will. You have strong leadership that are willing to listen to the taxpayers and the concerns of the citizens. I think that um, uh, you know, we can accomplish the goals um, that are set forth. I think the town charter, the way it reads now, is perfectly uh, it makes sense to me. I don't know what changes that they're talking about or if there are people that are more concerned with one form of government or not. I believe in town meeting the way it runs as we speak. And I think that with the only complaint seems to be that it's a long process. But I think that you go, you, you take this, whether you're elected or appointed, if, you know, depending upon the precinct, um, I think that you go into it with the understanding that there is some commitment to this. You know, any type of 
any type of job, whether it be a volunteer or not, requires you commit. Right, but do you feel that, that just kind of going off of that, that there could be a little bit of give on the, in the form of a town meeting could be a little bit more efficient? Oh, I, always, I would always look at something that would make it more efficient. Uh, one of the things that has um, been proposed by Selectman McCooper is, uh, and I think it's a great idea, and I've always believed in accountability, and they've proposed a, um, a voting system. Uh, it's like a handheld, mm -hmm. I'm not certain if you're familiar with it, but that, to me, shows, I think it would show more efficiency in the voting process. I'm not certain it would save much long, more time, but it, it would give, at the very least, a recorded vote on where you stand on the issues, which I'm a big supporter of. Right. Now, a lot of times uh, businesses come before the selectmen applying for uh, some, uh, some sort of license. It could be a transfer, a new business, uh, liquor, whatnot. Right. Do you feel that the, when the businesses come before the selectmen, is it done so in a uh, quick and efficient way when you watch those proceedings? Well, from what I'm familiar with, uh, it does look like it's done uh, efficiently. Um, it appears that uh, they addressed the, you know, I think the only, they addressed their, you know, request in an expedient manner. I think the only um, issues that seem to be uh, a sticker point is when the business doesn't complete the process, application process itself complete, and there may be a, a time issue or something to that effect. But I'm not certain. I, I would think that there are any problems with uh, the license request. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, going back to your goals, uh, let's let's expand upon that a little bit. Uh, some of the initiatives that you would you would take. Okay. As a as a selectman, if elected. Um, and, and are you asking more or less of like like what I what I stand for? In yeah, terms of let's talk about specific. Uh, let's just get you know. While we have about five minutes left, get into okay. some specifics. Well, I think our infrastructure is a concern. I think that um, uh, our buildings, um, and we've touched upon it earlier with the high school, but there are, there's, there's other concerns like this, the sewer, the, the pipes underneath the ground, and there's a constant request for change of that. That, to me, is a concern that needs to address, and we need to bear in mind when we're making decisions on expansion if our infrastructure is something that can take that expansion, for example, new development areas. Sure, and one of those areas is South, South Stoughton to the Brockton line on Park Street. Right. Uh, and there's a couple of industrial areas that really aren't maximized mm. in that area. Do you feel sewer could be the key to getting those industrial areas to their full potential? Well, I'm not certain the sewer, because um, you, you can't force people to hook in. Um, so th the sewer makes an attractive scenario, possibly for business. There are some home, homeowners that would disagree by uh, the fact that they have to pay the abatement on the sewer coming down the street. If they don't have any plans of hooking in or they don't have any issues with their septic, there's, there's really no incentive for them to hook in. So I don't think it generates that much potential income in way of homeowners. I'm, I'm certain that, uh, well, I'm pretty, pretty strong in opinion that it does help businesses out for sure with this with this the sewer. And so going back to again, you were talking about the infrastructure and your goals. So let's continue yeah. on on that. Well, one of the things that um, I take well the, the infrastructure. I know the fire station. There's some talk about uh, being repairs being made, and you know I haven't had a chance to tour the fire station in in, in a while. I was there a few years ago, and I would agree 100% that that's not a great building. For the firemen to be in or the firefighters to be in up there um, but again it's all about balance and where we can find the resources uh, to be able to fund these new buildings which I, was, I think is great ideas I mean it just it, it's it's perfectly makes sense instead of throwing money after re constant repair and things of that nature to look at the new buildings but again it's all a balancing act right and in terms of planning, I mean, is that something that you would take more of a, a focus on as a selectman capital planning? Well, I think we have to take a step back, take a look at it, see what's on the table, two years out, five years out, three years, even 10 years out, and obviously make the termination from there. You had asked about issues. One of the issues that I always talk, it, that's brought up is the South Coast Rail, um, which I'm an opposition of the South Coast Rail, and I'm not certain how much 
talk or how much the you know uh, promise there is to go forward with that. But that's an issue that we should be thinking about and all on the same page. And I think that we should have partners with the surrounding communities that are going to be affected with with this. And I said this from a FinCon position two years ago. What I wanted to know what these other towns were doing to either A, accept the South Coast Rail, the way they were proposing it, or B, fighting against the South Coast Rail. So that's something that would be very important. And that certainly ties into the downtown issue, sure which does. we talked about earlier in this show. Right. Uh, one, an issue uh, that sometimes gets raised, especially when new employees are hired, uh, is the residency requirement. Uh, currently, there is not a residency requirement here in Stoughton. Are, would you be in favor of one, or are you all right with the system as it is? Well, I think that I, I, I've said this before, and I, I think I should say that I'm, I'm in favor of some residential requirements. And the reason I think there is because uh, um, I like to make certain that department heads and employees and people that are working here are not only working here but committed here. I mean, there are there are. I'm not saying that you'd be forced to have to live in Stoughton to be given a job in Stoughton, or you know, we want we want the best candidates, we want the best potential applicants to be hired. But there there is something to be said as far as living here as well. So that would be something you'd have to look at maybe further down the road. Sure. Uh, let's before we before we wrap up. Uh, do some quick hitting questions. Sure. Uh, well. is, so just rapid, rapid okay. responses here. First thing that comes to mind, uh, you, the best spot to relax in Stoughton? Um, my backyard. <laughs> the best spot to eat in Stoughton? Oh, geez, anything that serves pizza, anywhere that do serves pizza. Do you have a favorite pizza place? Um, Chuck and Cheese, um, uh, Town Spa, um, Olivia's. I, I love right. them all, yeah. Uh, best part about living in Stoughton? Um, the people. I think that there are a lot of great people, a lot of, lot of pride in the community in this town, and um, it's easy, accessible to, to areas. All right, let's do some uh, word association. Uh oh. Downtown Stoughton. Need a repair. Peter Brown. Leader. Stoughton Schools. Productive. All right, any final words, Peter, before we wrap up? Uh, we just, uh, time just. Well, off the I, clock. I think we're at, a, we're at the crossroads. I'm asking for your vote, and I'm asking to give me your trust. Um, I believe our town is, is in position to, to, to move in a positive uh, manner, and I'm asking for your help and support and to give me that opportunity to be um, a selectman on April 7th. All right, thanks so much for joining me today, Peter. And thanks for tuning in to Stoughton Spotlight. This has been another conversation with the candidates. And just a reminder, Election Day is Tuesday, April 7th. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm Jeffrey Pickett from Stoughton Spotlight.